Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be giving you some new adult romance recommendations. <laughs> So if you didn't know about the new adult romance genre, this is a romance genre that basically I think takes place during college or around college age, the new adult age, if that makes sense. I know that some people have different terms for new adult romances. So the way I categorize new adult romance or what is new adult romance to me is a romance book where it is about um, anywhere from a couple from 18 years old to 23 years old. I feel like that's a good new adult range and a lot of them take place in college or surrounding college. Some of these, maybe two or three, actually take place in high school, but I categorize them as new adult romances because they're not YA. Like they have explicit content in it. I know some people might not say that they're new adult. They might say that they're YA. I don't think so. I think if there's explicit content in a YA book, it's not. A YA book. Um, that's my opinion on it. Um, your opinion might be different. I'm just going off my opinion right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna get started with the recommendations. First we're going to be talking about one of my favorite books of all time which is The Problem with Forever by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the one book on this list that I'm like hesitant on whether to call it new adult or YA. I don't even know if this is in the YA section at the bookstore in all honesty but this takes place in high school but it deals with like I feel like adult romance topics but it also has that new adult um, subject matter in it like there are like the mean girls and like high school drama but like I don't think this is a YA book in my opinion but you might think differently um, and that's okay. So this book is about Mallory and Ryder and Mallory has a lot of PTSD and she's selectively mute because she grew up in the foster care system and um, she suffered a lot while in the foster care system in a particular family. She ended up going to the hospital one time during this experience and then one of the doctors there ended up adopting her. And so it's years later since that experience and Mallory's always been homeschooled by her parents. And so finally one day she tells them, I want to go to high school. I want to experience high school. And I believe her senior year, she decides to brave it, go into the world and actually attend high school. And her first day of school, she sees Ryder who used to be her foster brother in their abusive foster home that they were both in. But he never left the system. He's still in the system. And it's their romance. This book is honestly like one of the best books I've ever read ever. It is amazing, fantastic. Some people might categorize it as YA. I consider it to be new adult because there is some explicit kind of things in here. But again, you might categorize it differently and that's okay too. This is just what I think a new adult book is like. Again, they're also in high school. So just be aware of that if you don't really like reading about high school drama and things in high school. So I really, really recommend this one though. Another high school one that I consider to be a new adult is Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. So our two love interests, when they were kids, they were at two different schools and they were given like their pen pal assignment at different schools. Their teachers ended up making them pen pals. Um, they didn't know each other, they never met each other before, but they were kid pen pals and they have been pen pals ever since until one day our hero just stops writing to our heroine and she has no idea why. It's years later, he ends up possibly popping up in her high school and maybe being the new kid. He knows who she is and she has no idea who he is and she may or may not be the exact opposite than what she's perceived in her letters that she has written him all these years. It might be kind of like a bully hate to love romance. Um, this one was super angsty, super fun. Again though, if you don't like reading about high school age, high school drama stuff, this might not be for you, but I really enjoyed this one. This was super fun. I'm gonna get like all like the high school ones out of the way. We have Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. Um, I feel like this is one of like the first books that I can think of that are like new adult romances. This is about Skye and Dean. It's been a while since I read this one. In all honesty, I don't really think about it all that much because it deals with a lot of dark subject matter. There's a bunch of trigger warnings in this book. I don't remember all of them. So if you want to know the trigger warnings, please go check those out. Both of our characters in this book are dealing with some sort of trauma in their life and they've kind of like come together to lean on each other through their trauma. That's all I can really say. Anything else would kind of be spoiling it for you in all honesty. If you want to know more I suggest go looking it up or researching more about it but 
this isn't necessarily my favorite Colleen Hoover book, but I still really enjoyed it and I really recommend it. Then we have Paper Princess by Aaron Watt. This whole entire um, The Royals series. I have a physical copy. It's just packed away in a box somewhere. I like to categorize this trilogy as like a younger version of a soap opera, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's kind of like the soap opera type of drama, like things you didn't even know happened pop up and it's just it's kind of crazy the series is kind of crazy so this is about i think her name is ella if i'm not mistaken um she ends up moving into this house because her father has died she's never met her father before but his best friend gets custody of her because her mother died a couple months ago as well and she doesn't know who her father is so she's been living by herself for a while being i believe a stripper through all of this then her dad's best friend finds her and decides to say i will pay you money if you come stay with me i want to get you out of this situation and so she comes to live with this family and it is a house full of four or five brothers and all of them hate her <laughs> she may or may not end up having a hate to love romance with one of them. These are super angsty, super drama filled. They're not like my favorite thing in the world, but they were very highly entertaining. <laughs> and this one, again, takes place in high school. So if it's not your jam, I don't know if you'd like this one, but really fun. Okay, now we're getting into like the college ones. We have Stay With Me by Mila Gray. So this is about Dee Dee and Walker. And Dee Dee is actually trying to become, I believe, a physical therapist, if I'm not mistaken, or something in the medical field. And she is doing an internship or working voluntarily at this like vet clinic for vets not animal not a, not, not like a veterinary clinic like a, a vet a clinic for vets <laughs> a clinic that takes in injured vets and so that's where she meets walker who when he was in i believe the marines possibly the marines i'm not sure but when he was out in combat he ended up becoming blind while he was in action he has become really depressed and really angry and really upset about what's happening in his life and Dee Dee ends up becoming his nurse in this facility. Oh my goodness, this romance is just so, so, so good. This is the second book a part of a companion series. Book number one is amazing as well. Um, the other two, not really my favorite. I absolutely loved this one and Dee Dee and Walker's story is absolutely like amazing to read about and I just loved them and I hope that y'all love this one too. Next we have Easy by Tamara Weber. This one takes place in college and this one deals highly with sexual assault. If you are triggered at all by sexual assault, please do not read this book at all. Like page one, the whole, almost the whole entire book talks about it. So our heroine in this book, she ends up in a very horrible situation at the beginning of this book and our hero ends up saving her from this situation. They actually have one a lecture class together but she never noticed him until this whole experience he's trying to help her through everything that she's like gone through and she's trying to connect with him and he's like also an artist if you like like artist type boys uh this one's for you he's an artist in here um this one was just really eye-opening at points and it <laughs> there were times it made me really frustrated because some things happen to women that i can't stand and sometimes men or people in general that like i just it grinds my gears that people have to go through all of this and most of the time it's men get off scot-free and it's just makes me mad <laughs> so this book brought out a lot of emotion from me um, but I really recommend it if you're looking for a college kind of somewhat serious romance book next I have my Oxford year by Julia Whelan so this is about Ella she is 24 years old and she's studying at Oxford she's there on a scholarship Sorry, it's been a while since I've read this, so I'm kind of like reading the summary a little bit. One of her first days at Oxford, uh, before classes start, she ends up almost getting run over by a douche canoe guy in like a car, and she ends up spilling coffee all over herself, and she gets really mad and peeved at him. Little does she know that the guy who almost ran her over, and like they start having like a fight, it was like, boom, and he was just a horrible douche to her. Turns out he may or may not um, be her professor. <laughs> and it may or may not be a romance between them. This one was just very interesting because like the halfway mark of this book, it leads to something I never thought it would lead to. It didn't even say it at all in the summary. And I was shocked by what happened towards the end and it was just very 
interesting. It was overall really fun. I liked the banter and everything between them at the beginning, but this is kind of just like a different new adult romance that I've never really read before, so I really like this one. Next we have The Year We Fell Down by Serena Bowen. This might be my favorite new adult romance. So this is about Corey and Hartley. Corey used to play hockey, but she ended up getting in a car accident to where she is now left in a wheelchair and she can't walk anymore. First year of college and she gets put into a dorm room and she puts it gets put into the only dorm room on campus that is like we're wheelchair accessible and there she meets our hero in the story Hartley who also lives in the same dorm as her but not in the same room and in a room down the hall um because he's put in this room because he got a hockey injury and now he's in crutches so he's just there for like the semester in this dorm. It's just a romance between the two of them but it's also it was like really heartbreaking to read at points because like Corey doesn't believe that she's worth love or worth a relationship because who would want to date a girl in a wheelchair and she's trying to come to terms with her disability and figuring out what her disability means and how just because she has a disability doesn't mean that she's less than anyone else and I loved that the only thing I didn't really like about it is that um, our hero is like kind of in a relationship at the beginning and uh that whole thing kind of bugged me. I wish that wasn't really in it. Overall, it's just really, really, really fun. I really enjoyed this one and I really recommend it. Next I have Within These Walls by J.L. Berg. This one doesn't take place in college, but our two characters are college age. This is about Lila and Jude. Lila has had a heart condition her entire life and she kind of like just lives in the hospital. A couple years ago, Jude's fiance, cause he was engaged while he was in high school or just getting out of high school to the love of his life. She ends up passing away in a car accident and she ends up passing away in this hospital. And he has not left that hospital since. And he has become a night nurse here and just I believe he's like a politician's son and so he's kind of like famous kind of and he's like turned his whole life around and doesn't want anything to do with that life and has found something new for himself. He's also just in grief still because of what happened to his fiance and so one day when he's making his rounds he ends up meeting Lila in the hospital and they become amazing friends and it may or may not lead to something more and Lila may or may not like help Jude, not through like romance, but just like in a friendship, in a relationship as a person level, like overcome and accept what has happened to him in his life. And I'm, in, I'm like getting chills about this book. I love this book so, so much. And I really recommend it. It's one of my favorites of all time. Next we have Dirty English by Elsa Madden Mills. This is just a Pride and Prejudice retelling that takes place in college. It's not my favorite one, but I know that other people might really enjoy it. Beware, chapter one, page one, sexual assault scene. So if that triggers you, I don't think this book is for you because um, that is discussed in this book a lot. Again, this is just a Pride and Prejudice college <laughs> romance. Again, I thought it was okay, but I think other people might like it. Um, that's all I really remember though, is that it's a Pride and Prejudice retelling so I don't really have anything else to say about this one. Next we have Scoring Wilder by R.S. Gray. This isn't one of my favorites. I only gave it a 3.5 but I know that other people have loved it and really enjoyed it. I unfortunately didn't love it as much as other people um, but this was the first book that R.S. Gray published and R.S. Gray has written so many romance books. So this one is about our heroine who is a incoming freshman at this college in to play soccer and so she may or may not um Get a little something something going on with the um soccer coach who's also like a professional soccer player for like um a really big soccer league and he just comes to like help the team and coach them during off season they may or may not end up having a relationship and it's very forbidden it's an age gap as well i liked this one it just wasn't my favorite i i just didn't like <laughs> some of the things that happened in this one but i know that other people will really love it then i have frigid by jay lynn or jennifer armitrout this one takes place in like a cabin in Vermont, maybe? I don't remember, it's snow somewhere. <laughs> they're both college age, they're both in college together and they are best friends. And they end up getting like snowed in and stuck. So it's a forced proximity here um, in this cabin in a snowstorm. And um, they're friends to lovers and through them being in this forced proximity, they may or may not reveal their feelings about one another. Really sweet, really cute. Had a lot of fun reading this one. I think it might be an Audible Escape possibly. So if you wanna check it out before Audible Escape ends, there you go. Then I have The Edge of Never by J. A. Mirsky. This is about Cameron and Andrew and Cameron is I believe 21. She decides she doesn't like her life at the moment. So she's gonna leave her hometown. She gets on a Greyhound bus, doesn't know where she's going, 
but on this Greyhound bus she ends up meeting Andrew who is going through a lot of stuff in his family and personally and they end up sparking a friendship and they end up going on a road trip together throughout the country and it was really amazing this was one of my first romance books that i ever read i recently reread it and i know it's not like the best thing ever written but it still holds like huge nostalgia for me this is the only contemporary book that takes place in like our time and not like a fantasy book that has a road trip aspect in it that i love i normally despise road trip romances this one however is an exception. I really liked this one. Their romance is so like swoonworthy. My only issue comes towards the end with the big boom that happens. If you know this book, you know, really recommend this one. Lastly, I have Wait For You by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This one I feel like is just the epitome of a new adult romance. This takes place in college. I don't know why, but like, a bunch of these romances deal with sexual assault. This one deals heavily with sexual assault as well. Our heroine named Avery, she ends up moving across the country to go to college to escape a really troublesome and horrible life in her hometown. So she moves across the country to go to college. And on her first day, she ends up meeting Cameron. He is like the soccer superstar at their college and she doesn't want a relationship. She doesn't want to form any like friendships kind of because of what's happened to her at her hometown. And she doesn't want to deal with like being let down or being betrayed ever again. But Cameron can't help but be super intrigued by Avery and really wants to get to know her. This romance is, it's so good. This is like the epitome of a new adult romance. I recommend so many of these, but like, I feel like this one, if you're looking for like a college romance, this one definitely fits the bill. So there you have it. Those are some new adult romance recommendations. Again, they might not be new adult to you, but I feel like they, they're new adult to me, if that makes sense. <laughs> so hopefully they're new adult to you. Hopefully I'm making sense. <laughs> Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye.